Hi, Gary DeWitt here. Today I want to tell you what you must know about estate planning, because what you don't know can hurt you and your family. By the time we're done, you'll know how to be prepared for and protected from life's eventualities, including how to avoid probate, minimize the impact of incapacity, and protect your family. If you have questions or want to talk, go to planwithgary.com. You're in the right place if there's something or someone you care about and want to protect. Want to make sure children are taken care of. Want to leave your assets the way you want them left. Not sure an online document's a good place or good enough. And you're not sure how to get started. Before we get started, I want to ask you this. What's the worst that can happen if you don't have an estate plan? What's the worst case scenario? Today, I'm going to show you what you need to know about estate planning. And I can make a certain bet that very few people know all of this, but everyone should. I'm going to show you what can happen if you don't plan and what's in a successful plan. Estate planning isn't completely about you. It's about the ones you love. Love is a major reason people create their estate plans. It's to make things easier on loved ones during periods of incapacity or after you're gone. Today, you're going to discover... Estate planning is much more than a will. How your plan can fail with dire consequences. Why you want to plan now. And how to create a successful plan. Here are just some of the problems that can happen when you don't have a plan. If you don't plan, your family will have to go to court and face the judge in probate or guardianship proceedings. I'll explain probate and guardianship in just a bit. Your family can tear itself apart arguing over your decisions and stuff. You leave yourself and your family exposed to probate, financial predators, opportunists, scam artists, creditors, publicity, loss of privacy, and much more. Your friends and neighbors can see exactly how much you're worth. Not to mention, financial predators, opportunists, and scam artists look for this stuff every day. The internet's made it easy to find those records. Here's my life in a nutshell. I had a pretty normal life for a boy growing up in northeast Oklahoma. I spent my days going to school and my mornings, afternoons, and nights working on the family's ranch. At an early age, I learned the importance of hard work. My family raised me with strong values. I was able to go to Oklahoma State University majoring in business administration and computer science. After graduating, I spent the next 20 years working as a computer professional and consultant. Then, in February of 2010, my father passed away of a sudden heart attack. Because of this, Mom and I had to take the family farm through probate. Later that year, I experienced some heart problems. While lying in the hospital bed and reflecting on my future, I decided to take my life and career in a new direction. Because of the experience of probate, I decided I wanted to help families navigate their probate issues. And through proper planning, I could guide others in avoiding probate altogether. Although not many people go to law school with the goal of becoming an estate planner, that's exactly what I did. I attended the University of Arkansas Law School, graduated, passed the bar, and became an attorney. I opened a DeWitt law firm and limited my practice to estate planning and probate. Growing up on a farm, it was understood that during the good times, you prepare for the not-so-good times. My education, coupled with my valuable life experience, gives me unique perspective and allows me to bring solutions to you and your family in a way that goes beyond the traditional client-lawyer relationship. I don't provide a canned, one-size-fits-all plan. I firmly believe that no family should have to go through the struggles of probate. Nobody should ever have to go to court to have their right to make their own decisions ripped away and given to somebody of the court's choosing. Everybody has the right to pick who will make decisions for them if they can't because of any reason. So that we're all on the same page, the first thing we're going to do is define estate planning and how your plan can fail, excuses, why you plan now, how to create a successful plan, and how to get started. If estate planning is more than a will, then what is it all about? We'll discuss what a will is and why a will isn't all you need in just a bit. Before we go any further, we need a common definition of what an estate is and what estate planning is. Simply put, your estate is everything you own. It's your bank accounts, checking, savings, car, boat, motorcycle, 
brokerage accounts, stocks, bonds, retirement accounts, house and other real estate, any businesses that you own, personal property such as clothing, jewelry, and collections. Your estate is not a big fancy house unless, of course, you live in a big fancy house. Estate planning is about much more than writing a will. There's two parts to it. The first part is what's typically thought of. That is, distribution of your final estate. The second part's about protecting you and your assets during your lifetime. It's about providing for your care if you can't make decisions because of loss of mental capacity. This is done through a combination of powers of attorney, health care directives, and trust. You designate, without court intervention, who will manage your affairs and property during incapacity. You ease the burden on your family in hard times. You minimize delays, taxes, costs, fees, and more. Planning works great when done right and fails horribly when done incorrectly. Here's four reasons a plan can fail. You put your children on the deeds. You put your children on your accounts. You relied on joint tenancy to pass property. And you didn't do anything. Adding your children to the deed to avoid probate sounds like a great idea. But doing it is highly dangerous. By doing this, you have made a gift to them. You have given them partial ownership. One person controls the fate of everybody else on the deed. For example, if they're in a car accident, get sued, and lose, then your property can be sold to pay for their lawsuit. If they get in tax or credit problems, your property can be used to pay. Adding your children to the accounts to help pay bills and avoid probate sounds like a great idea too. Again, doing so is highly dangerous. You've made a gift to them. You've given them partial ownership. One person controls the fate of everybody else, just like we discussed for deeds. And we discussed the problems that can happen when you put your children on a deed or account. But there's one more you probably haven't thought of. What if they pass before you? What if you and your spouse pass together and you are the joint owners? In that case, joint tenancy did nothing to avoid probate. And the best way to make sure your estate plan fails is to not do anything. If you don't create your plan, the state has written one for you. It's generic, and it probably doesn't do what you want. Their plan involves court and judges, and it's expensive. Here are 10 excuses people use to not plan. I don't have enough. I don't see the need to plan. I want my heirs and family to fight it out. I don't want to pay for planning. I don't want to make these decisions. I don't want my child to get anything. I won't be here. Why should I care? I have an old plan. I'm going to spend it all anyway. And number 10, I don't know where to start. Without a solid plan, the possibility of family fighting over small things multiplies. Often, it's not the more valuable things that cause problems, but the little stuff with sentimental value. Often, small estates involve more fighting between the siblings because there's less to go around, and people don't think about the lifetime benefits of a plan. They're fixated on the distribution of their estate. Planning is about protecting you too and shielding your family from making difficult decisions during difficult times. If you don't see the need, stick around and I'll explain why you need a plan. Even if you don't have much property, you need to protect yourself. Without a plan, the courts get to decide who will take care of you and your affairs if you aren't able to. If you want to see your heirs and family fight, then don't write a plan. The fights can be large and expensive, not to mention they tear families apart. Think of a plan as an investment, not a cost. Planning now is cheaper than reacting later. If you have a $100,000 estate, the cost of probate will be around $6,460. And that price doubles every time the value of the estate doubles. A guardianship to manage your lifetime affairs would be around $2,500. That comes to a total of $8,960 spent out of pocket. And that doesn't include the cost of losing your and your family's privacy. Planning now costs much less than $8,960 for an estate of that size. People delay making decisions because they don't want a child mad because they didn't pick them. People delay decisions because they are unsure who to pick. That's where your estate planning professional comes in. They can help you make these decisions. You need to make the best decisions you can now, and if you need to change them later, then change them later. 
Life changes and you need to adapt. If you want to leave a child out, you must write your own plan. The default plan from the state splits things evenly between all your biological and adopted children. Stepchildren are excluded automatically under the state's plan. If you want your family to have the extra expense and hassle of probate, then don't write a plan. If you want them to struggle through, then don't write a plan. If you want your family to avoid probate, save money, and prevent hassles, then you need to write a plan. You know, spending it all is a great plan, except for the fact that accidents and major medical incidents strike without warning. If you got hit by a bus tomorrow, you've left an estate that will need to be handled. And since you didn't plan, you didn't get a say. And since you didn't write a plan, the state decides how your estate is handled. And by watching this, you have gotten started. The best next step will be to come in for a conversation, and I'll share with you how to do that in a few minutes. Sonny Bono, the singer, songwriter, restaurateur, and former congressman, died in a tragic ski accident in 1998 at the age of 62. His net worth was just under $2 million at the time of his death, yet Bono did not have a will. Apparently he meant to have one drawn up, but never got around to it. Bono's fourth wife and surviving spouse, former Representative Mary Bono, spent years battling to be the executor of his estate. She also faced lawsuits filed by anyone and everyone who wanted a piece of the pie. A secret love child made his own claim on Sonny's estate. The then 35-year-old Sean came forward claiming to be Bono's illegitimate son. Later DNA testing showed he wasn't. Cher, Sonny's second wife, sued for a share of his estate, seeking $1.6 million in unpaid alimony. When the couple divorced in 74, Sonny was allegedly ordered to pay Cher $25,000 a month for six months. After years of fighting, Bono's estate was eventually divided between his surviving spouse and his two children. Let's look at the reasons you shouldn't delay planning. You've got the state's default plans of probate and guardianship. Incapacity, loss of control, loss of privacy, worry, and financial predators. You protect your children and spouse by planning. You shield them from publicity and the hassles of court. It doesn't matter how much or how little you have, the purpose of planning is to protect your family and you. If something were to happen to you, your spouse and children may be facing long court proceedings to take care of you in guardianship or settle your state in probate. With a plan in place, they can avoid court altogether and take care of you and each other. I could spend hours, if not days, talking about probate. Probate is a court-supervised process controlled by state law that distributes your final estate to your heirs and beneficiaries after you're gone. Unlike what many people think, if you have just a will, probate is required. Fortunately, and if you have a plan, you get to say who gets what and how much. Court supervision can be minimized by leaving a detailed will. An improperly written will can leave property out, and that property will be fully subject to the state's plan for probate. If you don't have a will or trust, state law completely controls the process and who gets what and how much, not you. State law requires that your estate be managed by the court until settled. Here's an overview of probate. Lawyers will be involved, and they charge a lot of money. Probate is public. Do you want your affairs in the public eye? Do you want the public to know what you have and who gets how much? It creates hassles for those you leave behind. It takes eight months or longer. Often, assets are frozen until the end. Without a will, the state is in complete control and decides who gets what and how much. And probate involves a lot of paperwork that must be signed by a judge. If you become incapable of managing your own affairs, nobody else has the authority to manage them for you without the intervention of the courts. If you become incapable of resisting outside influence, nobody has the authority to make you stop without the intervention of the courts. Hopefully, somebody steps up, goes to court, and gets a guardianship, then takes over managing your affairs. And you better hope it was somebody you wanted, not your child that's just after your money. Worse, it could be Adult Protective Services. 
They can swoop in, put you in their custody, seize your assets, and control your life. Also, guardians can't make all the decisions on their own. From time to time, they must go back and ask the judge for permission to do things. For example, a guardian can't sell or reallocate your property without a judge's signature. Finally, a guardian must file annual accounting and inventory. These become part of the public record. And as we talked about before, opportunists and financial predators can get to this information easily on the internet. Incapacity often strikes without warning. Dementia can creep up. Accidents and major medical incidents happen without warning and leave people unable to manage their affairs. Without a plan, your family may be forced to get an expensive and time-consuming guardianship. If you don't plan, you are giving control to the state. The state will decide who controls your life with a guardianship. Afterwards, they have a plan for distributing your final estate. Basically, you don't get a say and you give control to the authorities to decide what is best for you. As discussed previously, the state's plan creates public records that anybody can access over the internet. Financial predators, opportunists, and scam artists scour the internet every day looking for the public records they can take advantage of. Because your affairs will be exposed to the public if you don't have a plan, financial predators, scam artists, and opportunity seekers take advantage of your family. With a plan, you can stop worrying about what may happen and know what will happen and feel peace of mind. Paul Walker, the actor, left this world on November 30, 2013 in a car accident. He was 40 years old, and he left a 15-year-old daughter behind. He did have a trust and a will. Unfortunately, he made the choice not to put everything in the trust. So, his will had to be probated. And because of this, we know that he left at least $25 million in assets behind. Eventually, the funds were put into the trust because of the terms of the will. But the point is, he made several mistakes. He didn't fund his trust and depended on his will. Probate is public. This exposed his daughter to public scrutiny and financial predators. He created his will when he was 28 years old. However, he never updated it. He didn't take advantage of any estate tax planning and his estate was subject to high taxes. Now, let's look at how you can create a successful plan for you and your family. Your successful plan will be the road to peace of mind when it comes to protecting family in the best way you can. The best way to show you how to create a successful plan is to look at each item in a plan and what it does for you and your family. First, we have a durable power of attorney. A durable power of attorney allows you to choose a trusted family member or friend to take care of managing your money and other property if you become mentally incompetent. That is, you're unable to make rational and informed decisions or become incapable of resisting outside influence. Without a durable power of attorney, bank and investment accounts held in your name will become inaccessible. IRA distributions can't be requested, bills can't get paid, tax returns won't be filed, assets can't be reallocated, and real estate can't be bought or sold. Instead, a loved one may be forced into court to get a guardianship. A durable power of attorney provides the authority to handle your affairs without the court's involvement. A healthcare power of attorney is the equivalent of a durable power of attorney only for your health care. You pick people you know, love, and trust to help you make or make health care decisions for you. You defend your right to manage your medical affairs by writing you down your choices now. You decide now what you want and don't want. HIPAA is a federal law that limits access to your health care information. It limits who can request your medical records, talk to doctors, nurses, and even see if you're a patient in the hospital. It defines your medical information as protected healthcare information. This information can't be shared except with your permission and under narrowly defined circumstances. In order to let your family, even your spouse, talk to the doctor, see your medical records, and more, you need to give them permission. A living will is a healthcare document for use in your last moments if there's no chance and you can't communicate your wishes. A living will is different from a last will and testament. A last will and testament is how you want your property distributed after you are gone. An advanced healthcare directive, also known as a living will, personal directive, medical directive, or advanced decision, 
is a legal document in which a person specifies what actions should be taken for their health if they are no longer able to make the decisions. This document supplements your health care power of attorney and is mainly used if you're expected to pass in hours or in a permanent vegetative state. You choose which document takes precedence. Your will is like a letter to the court telling the court how you want your property distributed and who you want in charge. Somebody must make sure the will is proved to the court, that all your property is collected and appraised, all your bills and taxes are paid, before your property can be distributed to your heirs and beneficiaries. That's about all a will does. A judge must validate the will and appoint the person in charge. Only then is the will valid and in effect. Until then, it's just a piece of paper with no legal power. Remember, wills require probate. Probate is public. Your will becomes part of the public record. Your assets and net worth become part of that public record too. Predators and creditors like to scour the internet looking for that public information. With a will, your kids will get their inheritance at 18. That's the legal age they become an adult. Do you want your children to inherit at 18? If all you have is a will, your children get their inheritance outright. They'll get a big check and can lose it in divorce or credit problems. You can protect your children's inheritance with a trust. A will only takes effect after you're gone, not during your life. A will doesn't give any instructions as to how your health care and assets are managed if you become incapacitated. If you want to do any tax planning, you need a trust. If you are a parent of a child with special needs, then you don't want to leave their inheritance outright. That might disqualify them from getting any government benefits. You want to set up a special needs trust instead. A will isn't a very robust document. It's really not good for second marriages, children from prior marriages, or future marriages. A will doesn't cover many things you may care about. A will has to go through probate court before anything can be distributed. Many people think having a will avoids probate. Then they're surprised to find out that having a will almost guarantees probate. Here's a refresher of probate. Lawyers will be involved and charge a lot of money. It's public. It creates hassles for those you leave behind. Takes eight months or longer. Often assets are frozen. Without a will, the state's in complete control. And probate involves a lot of paperwork that must be signed by the judge. A will won't. Avoid probate. Won't avoid publicity. Won't protect special needs children. Won't shield children from creditors and financial predators. Won't protect children from losing it all in a divorce. Won't protect children with addictions to alcohol, drugs, gambling, and more. Trust avoid probate. Trust protect family. Trust are private. Trust protect assets. I like to think of a trust like a treasure chest. On top of the lid is a written set of rules as to who can get into it and what's to be done with the stuff in it. Now, during your lifetime, you put stuff, your property, into the chest. You can take stuff out, and everything in it's for your and your spouse's benefit. You maintain control over everything in it. You have the key to the lock, and therefore, you control the property. Now, however, after a person passes, the lid is shut and locked. Now, only the person you named, your successor trustee, can access what's in the chest and must follow the rules written on the lid. Only your successor trustee has the key to the lock. If it sounds scary to transfer your property to somebody else, remember, in most cases a trust is set up to avoid probate and manage property. You often transfer the property to yourself as the trustee. And since technically you didn't own the property, there's nothing to go to probate. Instead, your property and assets are quickly distributed to your heirs without all the red tape and bureaucracy. Your successor trustee doesn't have to get the approval of the courts. By using your trust to create a trust for your children, you can protect your family's inheritance against financial predators, creditors, divorce, addictions, and more. Trust can limit how much money somebody receives and when they receive it. Trust can provide for children with addictions or special needs. A trust can even control investment decisions. Because a trust is private, financial predators and scam artists can't find out how much your family is inheriting. 
Technically, a trust is a contract between two people for the benefit of another. The first party, often called the grantor or settlor, settles or grants onto the second party, the trustee, property for the benefit of the third party, the beneficiary. The trust document formalizes the relationships and sets forth the rules for managing the property and money in the trust. That's all the detail I'm going to cover on the legal definition. If you want to know more, give me a call and I'll happily tell you more. The Florida case of Aldrich v. Basile illustrates exactly why you don't want to be filling out your own forms. Ann Aldrich wrote her will on an easy legal form. On that form, she left a list of property to go to her sister. She also wrote, if my sister dies before I do, I leave all to my brother. Containing no other provisions, the will was duly signed and witnessed. The will did not contain a clause to take care of anything else. It made specific gifts of specific property only. And this is a mistake that's easy to make. Three years later, Miss Eaton died before her sister, becoming her benefactor instead of beneficiary. Her sister left cash and land. Miss Aldrich deposited the cash she inherited from her sister in an account she opened just for the purpose. Now, Ann Aldrich passed on October 9, 2009. She never revised her will to dispose of the inheritance she received from her sister. After inheriting from her sister, she did leave a handwritten note, possibly an attempt at a codicil. However, this note was declared invalid due to improper signatures and witnesses. Ultimately, Her nieces inherited a portion of the property Ann Aldrich inherited from her sister. At this point, you might be wondering, what is my next step for creating a successful plan so I don't have to worry about life's eventualities and feel peace of mind? So far, you've discovered estate planning is much more than a will. How your plan can fail with dire consequences. Why you want to plan now. How to create a successful plan. You create a successful estate plan to avoid probate, protect your children, protect your spouse, protect yourself, stop family fighting, and feel the peace of mind that comes from being prepared for life's eventualities. You create an estate plan to avoid the bad outcomes and make it as easy on your family as possible in difficult times. How do I get started? You have two choices. The first is trial and error. The second is to use a proven planning system. Introducing the planning system. This system considers everything you need to know and do to create a successful estate plan. When we're done, you'll know what you need to do to feel the peace of mind you've been seeking, avoid probate, and protect loved ones. You'll avoid the worst case scenarios. When you use this system, you'll know what you need to feel peace of mind you've been seeking, avoid probate, and protect loved ones. You don't have to figure out everything. We'll help you with that. You don't need all the answers. We'll help you with that. You don't have everything organized. We'll help you with that. When you're done, you'll have your estate organized on paper. Have all those decisions made and have a plan that avoids probate, protects family, stops family fights, and lets you feel the peace of mind that only comes from having a plan. Your first step is to come in for a conversation. We'll discuss your goals and desires for all aspects of estate planning, not just a will or a trust. We promise, when you're done with this conversation, you'll know how to be prepared for and protected from life's eventualities, including avoiding probate and protecting family. We aren't going to try to pressure you into buying something you don't need. If you decide, after discussing your situation and hearing my recommendations, not to go forward, we aren't going to apply any high-pressure sales techniques. If you do decide to go forward, I'll put together a plan to meet your needs and goals. When you come in for your conversation, you'll get 60 full minutes of my time to talk about your unique family, finances, and goals. You'll get to tap my professional expertise and 50 years of life experience so you know you're doing the best thing for you and your family. Of course, you may be wondering how much does Gary charge for this initial conversation? An hour of my time is worth $250 and my expertise is worth at least $500. However, I don't charge for the initial conversation because I believe that you should have a chance to meet me and decide you're comfortable with me before we move forward. But you'll get $750 or more in value just for coming in. And when you leave the meeting, 
you'll leave with an advanced medical directive, also known as a living will. We want to make sure that if anything happens, you get a voice in your treatment. And if you don't already have a copy of the book, 10 Top Secrets of Successful Estate Planning, you'll go home with a printed copy. This book expands on all the topics we've covered here and more. You don't often hear an attorney guarantee anything, but we do. If you don't do something now, you're going to get the same results and continue to worry. We will do the absolute best job we can. You will get our 100% best effort. We feel you won't get better estate planning service anywhere. We'll be on time. Your time's valuable. If we're more than 15 minutes late for your appointment, we'll give you $50. For estate planning work, flat fees are quoted up front. You'll know ahead of time exactly how much your plan will cost. No matter how much time we put into creating your plan, the price will remain the same. And no high-pressure sales. We don't believe in trying to pressure you into buying. We'll lay out the facts and let you decide. We can talk over the phone or in person. If you're technologically savvy, we can even have a video chat. These conversations are necessarily limited by time. We schedule them on a first-come, first-served basis. To claim your time, call 479-717-6300 or go to planwithgary.com. When you go to planwithgary.com, you'll be presented with the opportunity to get an in-person meeting or a phone meeting. It's very simple to schedule your time. Pick what kind of meeting you want. Pick a day. Choose the time from the list. Click Continue. Enter your first name. Type your last name. Type in your phone number. Type in your email. Tell me why we're meeting. Tell me how you heard about us and click Complete Appointment. In a few minutes, you'll get an email and a text to confirm your appointment. In your 60-minute in-depth conversation, you get access to my professional expertise and life experience. You leave with a living will ready to be completed. You'll get a copy of the book, 10 Top Secrets of Successful Estate Planning. You'll leave the conversation knowing what you need to do. We can talk over the phone or in person. If you're technologically savvy, we can have a video chat. These conversations are limited by time. We schedule them first come, first served. To claim your time, go to planwithgary.com or call 479-717-6300. Remember, you will create a successful estate plan to avoid probate, protect your children and spouse, stop family fighting, and feel the peace of mind that comes from being prepared. You can have, we can have this conversation over the phone or in person. We can even have this conversation over video chat. We have to limit these conversations because of time. We schedule them first come, first served. To claim yours, call 479-717-6300 or go to planwithgary.com.